This new Samsung Galaxy S10, the flagship phone from the most popular phone maker on the planet, has five cameras. Five. Three on the back, two on the front. So why does any phone need five cameras? Over the last few years, the camera has become the most important feature of almost any phone. The camera matters because Instagram and Snapchat matter, because video chat matters, because augmented reality is the future, and because if you're gonna take pictures of your friends, they might as well look nice. There are lots of ways to make a camera better. Bigger sensors, better sensors, better lenses with better glass, even faster processors or better software. There's really nothing stopping this phone from taking pictures as good as this DSLR, except that this DSLR has a sensor many times bigger than this phone, which means it collects more light. It's just not possible for this DSLR to be this small. It's just physics. Instead of relying on one combination of lens and sensor to do all the work, smartphone manufacturers have started to attach a bunch of cameras to a phone, then give each one of them a specific job and add them all together to try to make something better. The most common thing you get out of these multi-camera smartphones is different levels of zoom. Optical zoom actually magnifies images, whereas digital zoom just crops and blows up your photos using software. In conventional cameras, you get optical zoom by moving the lens, but a moving lens would make your phone too big and too fragile. So instead, the Galaxy S10 has three cameras, each one fixed at a different zoom level or focal length. On this phone, if you want to shoot a really wide photo, you're shooting out of one lens, a normal range photo uses another one, and a zoomed in photo uses the third. That's also what the 1x and 2x zoom do on the iPhone, by the way. There's a lot more that these cameras can do too. You know the portrait mode on your phone with the blurred background around your subjects? That's possible because the two cameras act like eyes. Each one sees a slightly different angle of the image, and they combine to give the camera something like depth perception. Once the camera learns how far away things are, it can do things like blur the background or even change the lighting in the shot. Another way to achieve the same effect is by using one camera plus a separate depth sensor that's used just for getting that 3D effect. That's what this S10 does with the front-facing cameras. Only this one is an actual camera. The other lens is just for processing that blurry background. Some phones, like this Essential phone, also use a black and white camera instead of a second regular sensor. It's actually able to collect more data about depth and lighting because its sensor doesn't have to worry about reds and greens and blues. It can just register how much light is coming in. Then the phone can use that depth data with the color sensor to make sharper, more detailed photos. Plus, a lens like this one typically takes awesome black and white photos. More often than not, all the cameras on your phone are full color, normal cameras. And the more of them you have, the greater potential you have for better photos. With the right software, it can take the best parts of a bunch of images and put them all together. That's how HDR photography has always worked. It takes multiple shots, some overexposed, some underexposed, some correct, then combines them into one perfect shot. These cameras can do that automatically. So here's a natural question. How many cameras are we gonna end up with? This light camera? has 16 cameras on it, and it takes 10 pictures every time you press the shutter. Light's working with smartphone manufacturers to add up to 11 cameras to the back of a smartphone. Then, all the way on the other side of the spectrum, there's Google. The Pixel 3 has one camera, and it relies on software to get some of the best shots I've ever seen on a phone. It uses the slight movement of your hand as you hold the camera to get depth information from multiple angles. And it can even approximate optical zoom, kind of, by collecting data before and after you hit the shutter. What's most likely to happen, I think, is a little bit of all of the above. Do you want a humongous phone with a giant camera and tons of zoom? You can have that. Do you want a cheaper phone that still takes great pictures of you and your friends? You can have that too. As for the Galaxy S10, I really like having the three cameras, the wide, normal, and zoom. It covers pretty much everything I want to shoot, and it only makes the phone look a little ridiculous. 